Since we are here in New York, I thought it would be fun to see if I could get, and maybe you could get, a cartoon published in The New Yorker. The New Yorker is famous for their cartoons. So a few weeks ago, Guillermo and I set out, we came up with some ideas, and we came up with some pitches, and we went to The New Yorker magazine. Good luck. You too. Hi, Emma's ready to see you. Oh, Come this great. way. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, welcome, guys. Hi, Guillermo. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jimmy. Come, take a seat. We're the new cartoonists. I hear you're aspiring to be. Yes, we would love to be published in The New Yorker. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the process of how we would go about getting published. So the, basically each week I get about a thousand submissions. That's a lot. Yeah, and then I whittle that down to about 50 or 60. And okay. I show those to David Remnick, the editor of The New right. Yorker. And at the end of the day, we buy about 15 or 20 for the week. Does he ever start laughing hysterically? Like he like, can't believe how funny one of them was? You sort of get numb looking at uh, a lot of cartoons. Does he ever come in drunk? <laughs> no. Because sometimes never... that will help yeah. with people if they, you know, have a couple. Yeah. So we've been working on some stuff. These aren't fully realized drawings. These are just some sketches that we made. And be honest, just, you know, as if we just came in off the street, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is Jesus eating a chicken leg. All right, where to begin here? Have you seen a New Yorker cartoon? I just showed you some. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, I yeah. seen it, yeah. Okay, so the question is, can you convey in the art that this is Jesus eating a chicken leg, and then can you somehow add an element that works sort of alchemically with the drawing to make it a joke that's more than just Jesus eating a chicken leg, but has some sort of like, wry uh, commentary on the whole scene? Like, right. Right. So we need a caption for that one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second to last supper? Maybe, yeah. yeah you should right write in. it so you don't forget. Okay, why do you write something? S-U-P-P-E-R. -P -P -E it's like super, except with an extra P. Oh, like that. Yeah. See, that is starting to feel like a, the tone of a New Yorker cartoon. All right, here's one from me. All right. Now, these are two people at an airline counter. So here is one in terms of parallel thinking in comedy, which yeah. I'm sure is something you think about all the time. Sure. In other words, somebody did this one before? So many comfort, emotional support animals, things like Have you had one where the animal thinks he's, the human is I his? I see that there is that added element. Well, it's not added. That's the whole element right there, really. That's the whole thing. Yeah. No. Okay. You've, you've convinced me. This is the power of in-person okay. uh, pitch right. sessions. This one, the friendly donkey. So I think the friendly donkey, there's a lot going for him. I don't know that it's a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe it's... Maybe. Well, there's nothing less friendly than a donkey. No. <laughs> so this is supposed to be King Khan. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think you're assembling a cast of sort of compelling, surprising characters who... You're building a world, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, Guillermo mentioned King Kong. I have a King Kong All right. one. Jerry, it's 2019. You can't just go around grabbing women anymore. Mm. That's a little. Timely. Yeah, that's a little. Nice. And it's King Kong, you know, he grabs women. And his name's Jerry, which is kind of fun. I do like the use of the name Jerry there. All right, All right. we'll put that in the maybe. All right, here's like a millennial joke. Ooh, so you can see. I like this a lot. I would need to know that you had the sort of ability in the finished art to make this millennial, like, have every single detail about him. Right. Well, these are rough oh, drawings. Yeah. I'm very, very busy. Guillermo knows yeah, this, right? Yeah, he's a busy guy, yeah. yeah. I mean, I like that it's not just a line with just a random drawing to accompany it. You're definitely, like, starting to do more than just illustrate Is this a yes, a is what you're saying in a long, long, we'll long, put, long, we'll long line? We'll put it in the maybe. Okay, all okay. right. Here's one. The bad news is I'm not a dentist. I currently have a moratorium on buying bad dentist cartoons oh, really? because my soon-to-be mother-in-law is a dentist. But yeah, I like. Well, I don't see why your personal life should interfere with my artwork here. Because this is... you know, this is the power that I wield. Oh boy! All right. But you just mentioned my oh, yeah, mother-in-law, uh -huh. so this is my mother-in-law. She's always angry. I think sometimes cartoonists get their revenge on in their cartoons yes. when they draw them. I well, think the drawing is top-notch. 
I would say that the way I would envision this cartoon is, so you have this be a caption, my mother-in-law is always angry, and what you have is a man or a woman who is speaking this line to a friend. How about if there were two Godzilla mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. but they look very friendly and wholesome, and then outside the window we see Godzilla rampaging in the city. And the two people are like, oh, my mother-in-law is always angry. That's great. You guys could have that's a, a, a Poe yeah. byline. If that one sells, oh, yeah, yeah. That, 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 yeah. That you know. would be the best thing for me. <laughs> so I'd say, yeah, we have some strong contenders. OK. Well, we'll, we'll get to yeah, work yeah. on this. Mm -hmm. And then you will decide yep. officially one way or the other whether yeah. we get in the New Yorker. Mm -hmm. So now I will go literally to the drawing board and come up with something that I hope is judged to be strong enough to be in the New Yorker. Let's go. Let's go. All right, and now to judge me to decide my fate from the New Yorker magazine, please welcome Emma Allen and editor David Remnick. Emma, David, I appreciate it. This is. This is a big moment, and I have the final drawing. You've seen it already. You've evaluated it. Absolutely. I will now show it to our audience, and here is the final drawing. Okay, there it is. As we described, Emma, I felt like this was maybe your favorite, so this is the one I went with. What is your final decision, your verdict, please? Jimmy, I'm sorry. It it didn't work out. It didn't work. What didn't work out? Well, I mean, of the thousand plus cartoons I reviewed that week, this just wasn't one of the 20 funniest. So next week it'll be in the magazine then, or what? <laughs> I welcome you to continue to submit. Yeah, I mean, yes. Oh yeah, I'll week. spend my whole life writing <laughs> stupid cartoons for you guys. Yeah. Oh my God, this is embarrassing. I'm humiliated, and not only am I humiliated, I'm humiliated in front of my, my hometown. What am I supposed to tell everyone at my victory party? Now? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> then guys, put the cork back in the champagne. They didn't like it. Now, this might be the lowest moment of my whole life. And gosh, for this to happen here it, in front of you, I mean, I'm so sorry that you guys had to even see this. It's uh. Oh, yeah, I gotta tell you something. This is a real punch in the old nuts. <laughs> and what am I gonna do now? I guess I'm never gonna be a, a comic book artist or cartoonist or any of that stuff. I've been rejected by New Yorker magazine. You picked those nuts up off the ground! <laughs> You don't, you don't let this get you down. You pick those nuts up and you put them back in your pocket. John, what are you doing here? I am your guardian angel, Jimmy. Are you really? No, I am not. Oh. I live under the stage. But oh. I want to tell you, you don't get down. This is just a cartoon. You don't need this. Uh, this just don't know, worry about it. It's easy for you to say, but my whole life has been leading up to this, and now everything sucks because of those two I know! <laughs> This is awful. It's just bad. You're That's... better than this, Jimmy. You know, you remember that you've overcome bigger obstacles than this. Remember when we first met? Mm -hmm. You were just a local producer of radio spots. You were living out of a van. Uh, you had just been uh, let out of a sexual offender uh, work release program. And now look at you. Yeah. You got a whole show here with people who love you. That's true. <laughs> I cannot stand to see my friend, my effervescent, my talented friend, my sweet, sweet Jimmy, be upset about this two-bit magazine where half of it is in italics. What is that? Half the magazine's in italics. Oh, half the magazine is emphasized. You're right, it is. You don't need them. 
You don't need them, Jimmy Kimmel. You're bigger than this. America needs you. This audience needs you. Brooklyn needs you, Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, thank you, As you look out on the audience, you've got to understand, Benedict Cumberbatch ain't going to interview himself, Jimmy Kimmel. It's not going to happen. I tell you, Brian. Actually, I can't hear, at this stage, I kind of know the gamut. I could interview myself. But <laughs> three hours ago, I kind of know where the thing goes. Cumberbatch! OK, right, sorry. <laughs> well... I think you're right, I mean... He smells magnificent. <laughs> really nice. He does smell nice. Like oolong tea. You don't expect it from a, from a European, you, you know? You really don't. No. <laughs> he cuts against the grain. Oh, it's like flowers. Yeah. Like the bouquet was just delivered to us. Exactly, but let me tell you something. What? I want you back out there. I want you to give these people the best <laughs> Kelly Ripa interview they've ever seen in their lives. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Come on, Come on. get out there. Come on. Thank you, John. Oh, by the way, one more thing. What? I almost forgot. It's just a little thing. Um, I was actually able to get your cartoon published somewhere where it's going to be seen by a lot more people than the New Yorker. Have you ever heard of a little place called Times Square? Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. They, they love Bring it. Them all. They love it. They love it. The New Yorker was wrong. They, they, they love it. They almost love it too much. But they, <laughs> but they love it. And, and, and you don't need this. And these two, shouldn't you two be uh, at some cocktail party pretending exactly. you know what's yes. going on? Yeah, get out of here. Get, get out, out of here. my set. I'm never reading your magazine on the toilet again. <laughs> Thank you, John Stewart. You're right. We're going to have a great show without them. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Uh-oh. Uh,